third. Hello everyone, I'm Leslie Cornwell, Certified Nurse Midwife with Midwifery Business Consultation. I have Kyra here with me. She has a wonderful birth center in Louisiana and I got connected with her because of her YouTube channel. Um, she's had it up for a year. She has over 35,000 followers. And so we just got into a conversation and I felt a lot of her wisdom and tips would be beneficial to the masses. Thanks for joining me today, Kyra. Thanks, Leslie. Um, so my name is Midwife Kyra. I'm also known online as the Cajun Stork. Um, I run a birth center practice in Louisiana, where Louisiana has some of the worst maternal mortality and morbidity statistics in the country, um, and just decided to set up shop over here. Um, I have an active YouTube channel, as you mentioned. Uh, I have a social media platform. And really, the idea behind that just kind of came from just trying to reach people in my area to teach them more about midwifery. And it just kind of blew up. And here we are talking to you, Leslie, which is pretty amazing. Um, if uh, I have four children. Um, I'm married recently. We got married about two years ago. I have four children. Um, one was born in a hospital. One was born at home and the other two I got through my second marriage. Um, and yeah, that's a little about me. Yeah, I think just the backdrop of starting a YouTube channel and where it's gone, I would love because there's so many midwives across the country that maybe live in an area where midwives and home birth isn't well known, they have a tight budget for marketing, and there's so many wonderful free social media platforms out there. Um, some of them it takes time, some of it's a learning curve, but I would love what made you go the direction of the YouTube channel? So YouTube is definitely not on my mind. I actually really love working on Facebook, um, but I ended up attending a birth for a couple who the father works on YouTube. He actually quit his full-time job and started doing YouTube full-time. And after some discussion, some ideas he had, um, one of the things being that, as you had said, when we spoke on the phone, there's no other midwives teaching women on YouTube. And so he had this grandiose idea of what we could become and end up bartering off his birth for him to teach me how to use YouTube. Um, and that's kind of how it went. I figured I would just be reaching just my clients, um, just my community. And then next thing you know, I find out that there's people all over the country who are being helped by my information, which I was not expecting at all. Um, and realized that it's a really great platform to, to help people. People watch YouTube. Yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly. I think when we have this World Wide Web, I mean, it's different if you're serving the Amish and doing a home birth, like that's one thing, but most of our women have, as I think the latest, latest stat was 80% of the world has access to the internet on their phone. Like there's so much knowledge at our fingertips now and to get it out to the masses, like if you're doing a, a meet and greet once a month at your office, you've got the barrier, they have to drive there, They there's so many people you could have. If you just have a YouTube, it's convenient, it's accessible, you've already done all the work as far as that past video it's just gonna it's gonna have a ripple effect of marketing that people just don't realize um what were some interesting things like when you started it and how it's morphed what were the topics and how have they evolved over time that you've chose to do so the one that always comes to my mind is what to do when your water breaks. Um, I had to repeat this so many times to my clients that at one point I was like, let me copy and paste a text on like, you know, water breaking protocol, what to do until uh, you come to the birth center. And I was like, let me just shoot a video and I'm going to give this video to my clients so they have all of the information that they need. And then I realized like not just my clients are watching it, you know, people who are wondering they're at home in labor and their water's broken, uh, you know, they're looking at it and they are getting information that is safe for them um, to use it too. And then from there, it's like all these people post questions and it's easy to shoot videos from those questions because you're, you're answering real questions that people really want to know. Well, and I think that's part of the power of why it's went all over the country, because it's not just midwife, it's not clients that want to know in your area. These are same questions that probably all the midwives are getting asked. So I think it has multiple benefits that if midwives know about your channel saying, okay, I don't want to start one, but they now can get a lot of education to their families from another birth center, home birth midwife. Like, I think that's so awesome. Um, 
did you ever anticipate you'd have 35,000 followers after a year? Like what was your vision or goal? No. Like maybe the 10, I take a month or the few. Like <laughs> When you first start your YouTube channel, my, uh, the guy who had trained me, uh, his name's Lane. Lane said, getting your first hundred is the most challenging and it took forever. So I just assumed all growth after that would be equivalently slow. Um, but once you get your first hundred, it just kind of goes rolling. Okay. What's really funny is, so my children, they're, um, I have, we have an 18 year old stepson and then I have 12, 10 and eight. Well, when I first started YouTube, it's about a year and a half ago now. Um, I have been attending midwif uh, doing midwifery for several years. I'm one of nine midwives in Louisiana. I own one of the, at the time, two birth centers in the state. Now we have four and I'm like, you know, moving midwifery forward, I'm thinking I'm doing this really great thing. And here are my kids. They're not impressed at all by their mom being a midwife. They're like, oh my God, mom, you have 30,000 friends on YouTube. That's so cool. And yeah. I just, unbelievable, you know? Yeah. Um, no, I didn't expect that at all. And even still, like, I am so humbled by the growth and the amount of people I've been able to help and serve. And I'm trying to shoot videos based on um, direct requests just to get this information in the hands of, of women all over the country so they can stop being afraid of birth and start enjoying the experience. Oh, that's amazing. Um, with the platform, I know you mentioned that you bartered for some of this education, the power of what we can get for our businesses with bartering and helping out and creating a win-win. Did you take any classes or what recommendations would you have for any midwife thinking of starting their own YouTube channel? Um, I didn't, um, because I had him teaching me one-on-one, -on -one, but if YouTube is a platform that other midwives want to use to grow their business, it is absolutely worth it to take a class. Um, they have several creators online who offer the information for free as well. You can sign up for them. You can get uh, weekly newsletters or you can take a direct class and pay for it. But I didn't realize that like YouTube's a like a job. It's not like, hey, let me just shoot a video um, and I'm going to put it out there. It also has to be findable. Um, otherwise, nobody's looking at this great content that we're producing. And so the process of how to set up the lighting in the room, how, you know, what to wear when you're in front of the camera, the amount of eye contact you make, these little subtleties, not, not to mention the content, keeping it interesting and keeping people watching, not just clicking, but actually watching your video, possibly even sharing it. It is way more work than I had anticipated. And so, you know, midwives really need to, we need to resource out like you and I had spoken about on the phone, like find help. We can't do it all. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's not possible. Like midwifery is my first job and it always will be, but I love doing this too. I just need a lot of help to get it done. You need an editor. I mean, there's just so many things. Um, and not to mention, you know, people always compliment me on my YouTube videos, but like, I'm awful on camera. My editor is amazing. Like you have no idea how many ums and, you know, and, oh, wait, that wasn't correct. Let me go back and re-say that. I, I mean, it takes so long for me to shoot videos. It's just not, it's not a simple task like it looks. Yeah. Where they see the, the 10 minutes, they're like, oh, it took her 10 minutes to make this. No, it's. Yeah, the downloading the algorithms and the backdrops. And, and that was when I started this YouTube channel a year ago, I just wanted knowledge out to the masses. And you're far ahead of me with the curve as far as like the algorithm and the understanding and the knowing. I just was like, create it. Maybe it's not the greatest in the beginning, but starting from somewhere. And I think that's the whole point is right, as right. midwives or pushing our envelope of comfort level, don't over plan and analyze and think, well, I'm going to do it once I get a budget for X amount to make these videos perfect. Right. Just get the information out there and then you can gradually get the content higher quality. Um, you don't have to overcomplicate it. I know so many people, especially with Facebook live and um, they'll just take their phone and they'll just talk for a couple minutes, hit and download. And that's okay. It's a good starting point. Um, what other advice would you have for any midwife thinking of starting a YouTube channel? Is there certain content, maybe another direction, like certain videos really get a lot of discussion and um, a focus point? I think starting with your community. Um, it, it, when I'm shooting videos, I'm visualizing who am I speaking to, what, are, what information are they looking for from me, and how am I trying to say it to them, but also keeping in mind, like as midwives, we work with a low-risk population, 
a lot of women Googling this stuff may not be in that, that population. And we have to be mindful when we're giving advice. And so shooting for your community helps you better understand how to relay this information. Like I'm visualizing a low risk mom whose water's broken and she's an early labor at term. So here's good information for her. It's too broad to, there's so much as midwives, as you know, there's so much we can talk about. Where do you start? Yeah. Um, and that's just the best way is think about who's watching your video, make her a person. Yeah. What is it that she's experiencing and what is it the information that you want to get into her hands in about four minutes or less? Yeah. So it's kind of that target market, just like when you're making a business plan to start your practice, what are your ideal clients? It's also what are your ideal viewers and then reverse um, market that mindset. Um, yeah, I was talking to a couple of midwives earlier this week and they were so excited about this video coming out and these tips and suggestions because we were talking, one of them in particular, we were talking about how only one to 2% of the population does out of hospital births. And we truly could make it so much more if people understood home births, if they really understood options, if they knew, like, <laughs> there's so much, we were talking about the perceived riskiness of picking an out of hospital birth and just getting that knowledge of putting the myths and the barriers, having interviews with past clients and just getting those testimonials out to the masses, I think has so much power potential that yeah. It, it's getting the storage, taking advantage of that World Wide Web. So what other, um, have you noticed like an influx with your business, a lot more clients from it or? Oh, more? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. So one always stands out. This one couple always stands out that the mom, this was her, I think it was her third and she really, really wanted a home birth and dad was not open to it at all so she's like just come sit watch this youtube video with me and she just randomly picked one she picked the what what do i pack in my birth bag video and as i'm going through the video he said i was looking going oh wow she actually brings stuff to a birth absolutely and they ended up having not only an amazing home birth last year but they're also having another one this year so all because of that simple assumption that we'd bring more than just a string like it blows my mind some of the conversations conversations and the assumptions. And if you're not open to asking, I think that's part of the hard is once they're in front of you for a consult, you've had 20 barriers before they even call or before they even are in front of you. So if you can give little hints and little educational opportunities that are very laid back, no pressure attached, those are what's really going to get a lot more consults calling you. Um, was there other examples? I know you had mentioned you got lots of clients in that direction. Yeah, it, it's funny because, you know, sometimes I'll have, especially like the younger uh, moms in their early 20s where YouTube's very popular in that age group, like they'll come in and they act all giddy. They're like, hee hee hee, and they come do their tour and they're like, I already knew I wanted to deliver here. I just wanted to meet you in person. And it just cracks me up. You're like, a celebrity, aw. <laughs> it's so cute because I just, I never envisioned it that way. And as uncomfortable as I was to do this, you know, for me, I knew it had to be done and no one around me was willing to do it. So I was like, well, I'll do it. And it has really grown my business. It's really changed midwifery in my area. I'm not so sure the physicians are watching the videos per se, but clients are bringing this information to their doctors and I have a reputation with them in this area. And so it's kind of made things easier. I'm being represented um, and accepted more on a professional level among the physicians and the hospitals. And it's just the snowball effect of positive things that have come from just trying to put education in the hands of clients. Yeah. And I think that's something good you brought up about the going outside your comfort level. I mean, I don't know too many midwives that like to be on camera, like to be on videos. Mm -hmm. Like when there's birth shots, they're usually trying to hide themselves a little bit. Like we, we don't go into this to be the forefront, a spokesperson right. of branding. We want to be the little guardians and the backdrops, but with midwifery nowadays, you have to, you have to be the spokesperson. I mean, me making YouTube videos, like the same way. I'm like, I can't stand it. I, I don't want anything to do with being on the world wide web. And then it gets easier. And then you see the power of getting past your mental games. You're playing with yourself, that this is valued and people are looking for yeah. it because it's just not out there. So yeah, well, I mean, honestly, when I was looking for midwives and YouTube Channels. I mean, you and uh, a, a lady from Great Britain that's a midwifery student has a channel and that and me like I couldn't find any other yeah. midwives doing YouTube channels. So I think there's a definite opportunity. And I think of like when you talked about the exposure, not just to consumers, but nurses in the hospital systems or lobbyists or just 
if there's people wanting to make change, you've got this momentum, you've got this easy access education system. Um, do you I I'm sorry, go ahead. In October, uh, in October of last year, I was actually asked to speak for, it's a Louisiana Maternal Mortality Summit in an effort, it's a, like a CEU opportunity, but among the state, um, maternal fetal medicine, physicians, doctors, nurses, everyone trying to get on the same page to reduce maternal mortality. And when they called and they asked me to speak, they had found me on, on YouTube and they had called and asked me to speak. And it, when I was being trained as a midwife, which was not that long ago, like I'm still young, okay? I was trained by the elder midwives. And there were, I think, maybe five midwives or six midwives in the state at that time. And the youngest one above me was, if I'm not mistaken, in her 40s. I was 26 when I got licensed. So I was a baby. And I, they, I created a website and I got for lack of a better word, I got chewed out. I got fussed at because midwives don't promote. We don't put ourselves out there. We're not asking to be seen and we don't advertise. Like mm -hmm. people find us by word of mouth only. Mm -hmm. And so when this maternity mortality, they called me and asked me to speak. At first I had this embarrassment from being trained that way. And like, oh my goodness, now I'm being seen and I, I'm ready. I'm really not ready for that. And on the other hand, so much honor and excitement about the future of midwifery in the state and the impact that we have um, to change maternal mortality and morbidity in the state. And it was such an honor and YouTube is what got me there. So it's not just about reaching consumers. You have no idea the impact that we can have just by being brave enough and making the time and putting ourselves out there to shout the benefits of midwifery from the rooftops. Well, and I think you brought up an interesting point about states where it's a little more restrictive or a little more underground, where you're, you're worried about your safety security. There is that hesitancy of how much vulnerability do I put my practice and my community by going out and being public? This is what I do. This is my yeah. services. And I think we take it for granted in some of our states where we can comfortably talk and whether it's it's more of that fear or if it's more the direction of this is our culture. We get busy by referrals. If you give good quality care, you're going to get great clients. And that's the way you build a practice. If, if which direction is more, it's always. Like yeah, it's. Um, I don't really know how to describe how challenging it's been from a personal level to get to a point where I was willing to step out and do that and stop thinking about it. If you watch some of my earlier videos, maybe not because I have a great editor, but I stopped several times and thought, if I say this, is someone going to come back on me for this? You know, mm -hmm. and now I realize like I'm comfortable in my shoes and I know my, um, my followers. And I know that sometimes I make mistakes in my videos. Like the other day I said, you know, pregnancy instead of birth, like little things like that. But the bigger thing is what am I trying to put in the hands of everyday women? And it took a while, but now that I'm there and I stopped thinking about all these voices telling me I shouldn't, I couldn't, don't put yourself out there. This is dangerous. It's bringing too much, you know, um, what's the word? Too much, uh, oh my gosh, like viewership. What's the word I'm looking for? The promotional uh, side, the celebrity Oh, come status. on, Leslie, what's the uh, yeah, word? The, yeah, just being able yeah. to to have to this different status yep, to midwifery. But I think, I mean, call the yeah. midwife. There's so many it's channels. So there's so many things out there doing it that are the, the business of being born, these documentaries, like this is how you get awareness and you change a culture. Like I really, truly right. believe we could have a right. lot. Women would pick home birth out of hospital midwifery that are low risk, healthy, good candidates if they really had good level-headed mm -hmm. informed consent of their choices. I just think it's getting past that culture right. norm and you're creating that way. You're creating a trendy um, direction. Do you have a lot of other social media platforms or just focus more on YouTube? Um, I mean, I have a Facebook and an Instagram. Um, my Facebook is more like my local clients. Like I really have a large following of people who are in my area. Um, Instagram tends to be, be like more of the YouTube followers. Um, so yeah, YouTube is something that I plan on doing weekly and just continuing to do. Um, and it is a, like more of a long-term plan, but you know, it's, it's easier to get all that information out at once through YouTube.
Yeah, I was curious how you picked your schedule. Like if you decided uh, you're going to post like a certain style, a topic once a week, twice a week, like how did you figure out a good flow or was that part of the training with the, the husband? It was a part of the training where he had suggested, you know, once a week videos where I'm not overwhelming my audience, but I'm putting out a lot of good content. Um, but then also keep in mind, I'm, I was, I've been a solo practice midwife for several years. So it's like, I'll have a day where I'm off call and I'll shoot a bunch of videos. And then I have to pick the schedule that I release it based on my clientele. So, you know, if I see five months down the line, I have a really busy month coming up. I have to shoot months in advance to prepare for that. Cause I mean, I can't come in front of the camera after a full night of no sleep serving women and bring my best, you know, I, I want to bring my best to my clients and my channel. Well, and that's the nice thing with making videos is you can, you don't have to, it's not real time. It's not on the spot. You record a bunch, you do it in group sessions, you can make a structure to it. Um, and that's what I think was hard for me with doing Instagram versus these other social media platforms. Cause I'm all about, okay, I make blog posts for the next two months or I make videos for the next, like I, you, it, you want to be very careful with your time management because it could get eaten away. So that's what I was curious. So do you do much other marketing besides this? Like do you have a marketing budget with your business? or is it primarily your YouTube channel? So you have to keep in mind, I'm the only birth center for a very whole Southern Southwest Louisiana. So if anyone's looking up birth center and midwife, you're going to find me. And also the midwives in my area were also trained by the same midwives I was trained by. And so they have that, we're not going to market mindset and only recently have developed like their own Facebook page. So I've been marketing since I became a midwife in 2013. So if you look up midwifery in my area, you'll find me. So I don't have to do a whole lot of marketing to keep kind of a steady clientele. I really love to do in-person like monthly meetups for natural birthers. Like I just, I love talking about birth with my friends. It's awesome. But with COVID, we haven't been able to do that. But um, as you know, since COVID, midwifery in America has blown up. And every midwife I know has been incredibly busy. It's the opposite. Um, which They're has all burnt out and need amazing. support a different way. Yeah, it's a good thing, but it's it's too fast, yeah. too quick. It only took, we, the big joke around the nation is, only took a pandemic for midwifery to be normal again. <laughs> Right. Isn't that ridiculous? We're midwives of 10 births all over the world, except America. And now people are like, oh, this is cool. Oh, let's look this up. And in addition to that, having been set up on YouTube already, when the pandemic hit and midwifery spiked, so did my channel. And that's where all those followers came from. People were looking up out of hospital birth information. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm excited. I, I, I subscribe to your channel. You're going to have a lot more after this. I think it's just as important for consumers and it is for midwives to know this education is out there that they can refer to, they can utilize. And if they feel brave enough to start their own channel, are you open to some emails or people asking basic questions for direction? What's a good way for them to contact you? Absolutely. But I genuinely don't know how much help I'm going to be like, I'm sitting here talking to you and I'm like, I can answer these questions. But if you ask me anything about YouTube, I'm still learning. It is a constant learning process. Um, but I can definitely point people in the direction of some really good um, YouTube classes mm -hmm. and people to follow. And I don't know, have you heard of the platform Clubhouse? Mm -mm. Clubhouse is a new platform, which it's voice instead of visual. And you can actually plug in to some of the most famous YouTubers um, having conversations with each other and learn that way. They have um, like groups and then topics. And you could be like, okay, today I want to learn how to shoot a really good video. And you can plug into that for free. It's really great. And so taking advantage of these resources, there are people out there who want people like us to succeed and get our message out. Um, and we need to be sharing our message. Midwives all over this country have so much to share. Yeah. Well, and that's where, like, that was my inspiration for starting the YouTube channel. Like there's midwives that are semi-retired that have, or unique skill set, or unique businesses or unique stories that I'm like, you need this told to the masses and here's a simple way to do it. So yeah, I, I love that where you're at and where you've taken your YouTube channel and just taking that inspiration and getting it out. So thank you very much.
Thank you. I appreciate it. It's such an honor. Like even when you reached out to me, I'm like, oh my goodness, Midwifery Business Consultants wants to do a video with me. Like I'm still just so excited and so honored to serve and love this being able to help and get other midwives to do it too. So thank you for having me. I You're really welcome. appreciate it. And yeah, anything we can do for your practice, let us know. And um, that's the whole point. I mean, I loved meeting with great midwives all over the country, figuring out their challenges, figuring out where, where their strengths are, what maybe just the right connections. I think that's been the biggest thing is there's so many unique businesses. Midwives need unique business supporters that there's very few accountants there's very few people that direction so no I, I love what you're doing and thank you for making great birth centers and I know you expanded and I anticipate you'll have more birth centers in time um, so have a wonderful day Kyra and I'm sure we'll talk soon all right bye